Okay. Um, all right, Diane, I'm going to start sharing my screen. Hold on one second. Join the meeting. Okay, Diane, take it away. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about the Hawthorne Senior Center today. It's the place where fun begins. Okay. Do you want to introduce yourself really quickly so that everyone knows who you are? Um, my name is Diane Brown. I am, work in the Hawthorne Senior Center. I um, A brief of what I've done with my life, 30 years in the corporate world with AT&T, um, and 16 years here at the Hawthorne Senior Center. Um, love the seniors. I love my job. Uh, it's such a pleasure to do. If I didn't need the money, I would just do this for free. I really would. <laughs> so let's go to the next slide. Right. So what it's all about, the history of um, our senior center was built in 19, here in Hawthorne in 1979. And they did uh, put on a new part, which includes our billiard room, computer room, a large room in the back for exercise classes and art classes and all of that type of thing, uh, and a sewing room in 19, uh, around 1986, 87, somewhere in that period of time. Uh, most of the people have left, and so everybody doesn't have that readily available. The exact. Is being recorded. Um, we want to talk about the activities that we do here, advocacy, wellness, excursions and dances that we have. And then the last thing we'll talk about is very briefly, our new facility and redesign that's coming up should start sometime this year and be finished in 2025. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you. Okay. so. This is some of the classes and activities that we do. This is some. We're always adding things as people call in to volunteer to bring things for our seniors that we think will uh, benefit them. So we have an art class from um, on Mondays from one to two. We have Tai Chi every Friday from 10 till 11. We have walking on Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 till 11. Dancer size class was, oh my gosh, the people love that class, but the gentleman who's running it, volunteering to do that uh, is out right now with some issues with his back. So he'll be back and they'll continue that. We have dances quarterly, we have field trips. Uh, there's a senior resource fair once a year and that is really put on by the uh, uh, Hawthorne senior commissioners. They head that up. And then there's pickleball, this is to name some of the things that the seniors do. Um, and pickleball is every Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to 11. We play bingo also. Bingo on Mondays, uh, I'm sorry, Tuesdays and Thursdays from one to two. Next slide. One of the things we do for the seniors is advocacy. Um, so we help seniors here who come in with issues we find that seniors, we came from a different world. And so there, everything wasn't on a menu on a telephone where you push this button to get to there. And then when you get to there, then you push another button, uh, choose another item to get to another part of the menu and then end up getting hung up on. So a lot of times with the, we see seniors have banking issues, for instance, because they just give up. They can't get the questions answered. They feel that they're not going to be helped. Um, so very briefly, just on this one, I'll give an example of one of our seniors coming in and saying that in uh, last year, January, I believe it was, he had went to the bank and went to the ATM to take out $600. When he, um, the bank said they gave it to him, the ATM machine showed that they gave it, but no money came out. So he was told to go to the next ATM machine over where then he got the $600 and it, and the money came for, uh, out of the machine. Then a month later, he comes in to see me and he's got this um, letter from the bank that says they're going to take $600 from his account because he got $1,200, but he really didn't. And he had talked to the bank that same day when that money didn't come out of the first ATM. So I made a call for him because he was convinced and uh, he was telling me about it, but he says, 
they're not going to do anything about it. I said, no, they will give you, they will not take your 600 because they had to have not been, they had to, if you had gotten that 600 out of the both machines, then they would have been $600 out of their balance. The balance would have been off. It couldn't have been off because you didn't get the 600. I made a call to make this very short, made a call, talked to claims and explained to him what had happened in the midst of us talking, but this gentleman was really convinced they would not do anything. He, he just kept saying, you're just wasting your time. Don't, you know, don't worry about it. They're, they're going to take my 600. And so um, found out that the, the reason he went to the second ATM machine was because one of the bank employees was standing there in Chase Bank, as they always do. And they saw that he didn't get the money and they just told him to go to the next uh, ATM machine over. And so we had to call claims back tell them that, give them that information. And of course, the money was never taken out of his account, the $600. But in his mind, he was actually convinced that this money was going out of his account. I mean, you couldn't convince him until he saw a couple months later that the money hadn't left. So it's at helping seniors in those areas that they're not going to help themselves. They're going to just let it go because it's just too much of a task for them. Same thing with social security issues, making calls for them, putting them on speakerphone, getting questions answered for them. And we all know about that Zedek that they come out here to our senior center every other month, maybe some seniors every month. We, we set those appointments. We have speakers come out and talk about fraud and for, for seniors, elder abuse, the homeless seniors. We have the homeless services here uh, right on our grounds but sometimes they come in here first, we speak to them and then we'll get them over to the correct place that they need to go. Then we have Stella Insurance that helps with our advocacy. There are main brokers that come in and um, they've been coming for so many years that most of the seniors know them. They uh, sponsor a lot for the seniors. They give us for the last few years, I mean, before COVID, they've been doing our Mother's Day. They bring in the food, they bring in um, mariachi band for an hour then they have a dj for dancing for two hours after that and um they're really a great advocate for our seniors also next slide the exercise classes that we do i've mentioned most of them i don't think i left anything out right now uh, we have a nurse that comes out and she's associated with SCAN and she um, has shared and it's on a monthly basis. Then the thing she's shared, getting a good night's sleep without medications. Uh, another month, how to dispose of medications safely. The last month, May, she did emergency medical card coaching and, and provided them with emergency cards. There's memory loss and med medication safety coming up, safety uh, or safe use of pain medications. There's another class coming up of laughter yoga. Um, I, I'm interested in seeing what that one's about myself. We have arthritis classes. They just finished the uh, eight week course of two days a week um, in May. And it starts up again in July and goes into August. We have a CalFresh program, which I'm sure that most of you know about the CalFresh program. She comes in every Wednesday and shares with uh, healthy eating and that type of a thing. We have haircuts every month, once a month on a Wednesday. And of course we have the nutrition program that all senior centers or most senior centers have where they have the, the um, lunch program at 12 o'clock each um, Monday through Friday. And on Wednesdays, they bring in the um, seven days of frozen meals and that it goes out to the seniors. Next slide. We do quarterly dances and we do field, uh, monthly field trips. Um, we just went to the LA County Fair on the 17th. Was that, that was the 17th. We went to the uh, LA County Fair. That was an excursion, it's a little bit different. Um, it wasn't hot like it's usually been and it wasn't as crowded as it's usually been. So I think they really enjoyed themselves. And so the trips that are coming up for this year, Disney City Walk, City Walk at Universal Studios, um, the Grammy Museum, I'm trying to think of everything. Um, the Arboretum, 
They're going to the Arboretum. We're going to the LA to into six, uh, Third and Fairfax for the farmers market, and those are the types of trips that we take and they enjoy. Next slide, please. Our redesign. And that picture down there on the left-hand side is really um, a vague picture. Um, but anyway, it's going to be the story. The building is going to be a two-story building. And um, it's supposed to start, I don't know, August, September. I'm not sure yet because no definite date's been given to me. I'm sure people in City Hall know that, but I don't know that information right this minute. And if you really want to see a better photo or some better photos, if you go on um, the website for the city, you'll see a lot of more uh, photos. If you look at the picture on the, the right hand side, the top left, it's glass at the top. That's more a better picture of what it's going to look like. And they're adding more, um, well, it's gonna be really modern. It's really beautiful. And that, uh, any questions, anyone? That looks, that looks really nice, Diane. Um... Wow. Where did you guys get the funding to to do that? Oh, it was funded by, um, a, uh, you know what? I can't even remember the lady's name, but she's one of our, um, is she a con? I don't even remember her title, but her mother lives here. And so she got the funding for us. Not, just, for us. Not just for us, because they're doing remodeling in the city, period. But oh, okay. she, she brought back a particular amount of money for the senior center. Is it philanthropy or? think of her name I'll, I'll find the name in my emails and get it to you guys yeah. during the meeting later on and is there something on that site now or is it taking up some new space well this is where we're at oh okay this is where i'm at right now at the bottom part but it doesn't look exactly like that it doesn't have all those windows in it yeah we have windows but it doesn't look like that so are um, they just going to build on top of you guys or are you guys going to have to move out and we have to move out Oh, we have to go out because remember this building was built 1979. Mm -hmm. It has to be retrofitted. It's not earthquake proof to be building something on top of us. Okay. So we will be moving to up into the Memorial Center. Okay. Don't know how long. They haven't given us that information either, but we're hoping that that doesn't take, I don't know, construction can take a long time. We're hoping it won't take very long. Okay. Um going to be nice and then evan from um uh, pv asked if um if services will be affected during construction no we still gonna have our we can have all of our programs because mm -hmm. the memorial center is so large and we have the sports center our walking our tai chi the um pickleball all that takes place and we have rooms over there that we use right now we started using instead of walking outside like we used to it was so hot in 2022 in September, they allowed us to move into the air conditioned gym and we walk around the basketball court, which is, you know, that big room. And so there's other rooms in there. That's where we'll still take those things will take place. And there's a kitchen next door. And so the seniors will be in the Polaris room. Yeah. Um, when you talked about um, banking, um, we see that on the homelessness side where, um, yeah, seniors are being frequently targeted for fraud. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I had a one, we had one client, client, a client that, um, he 80 years, years old, retired, but he was insistent that he had one, you know, publisher's clearinghouse and the fraudsters were telling him he had to pay taxes on them winnings. And, um, and so he was giving them like most of his social security check like two thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. um, and um and so yeah we're, we're seeing the need for financial conservatorship mm -hmm. uh amongst our senior populations and it kind of sounded like the gentleman that you were describing kind of needed that too uh, and you know what he's not dementia and anything like that but in yeah. his mind yeah the bank is going to do what they say they're going to do and they sent him the letter i read it mm -hmm. that said you got $600 on this date and you got $600 on the other date. Now, common sense tells us that when they uh, took the money, when they did all the stuff that they do at the end of the day, and uh, I can't even think of the word I want to use, they were not $600. They were not missing $600. They yeah. were not, you know, 
uh, they had that $600 there, they would have been ahead. If he had gotten the 600, they would have been ahead, you know. So because he didn't get it, they had to have been six, thinking he did get it, but I still have $600 here that he, where this come from. And so they have in their head that they just can't, they're not gonna, the, the bank is not gonna change their mind. I'm, you know, here I am. So we got it fixed. We had another lady, a, a quick example. Someone called her and said they were from Chase. This lady was in her 80s, is, is still living. She's in was in her 80s at the time mm -hmm. and uh, told her that um, she's a retiree from the L.A. County. So she had plenty of money in the bank, many, two, two accounts, because she wasn't spending any of it. And um, she, uh, the, this lady told her from Chase, and she's telling me about this, this day that I'm at her house visiting her, um, that the they said she owes X amount of hundreds of dollars. She wrote a 35, you know what? It was a $35,000 check. And then they gave her an address in Nevada, uh, not Nevada, Oregon. And she mailed the money. And they, of course, it was a scam. And they got this money. Wow. We, um, so the day that I was, she was telling me about it, the phone rang. And it was this lady calling again. And the woman, the senior answered the phone. And then I took, asked her, could I talk to the lady? And the lady said, um, uh, she, we need uh, X amount of more dollars. And I said, okay, we're going to go down to the bank. I'm going to take her to the bank today. Well, can she come on Monday? Because I'll be at the bank on Monday. I said, no, she'll go to the bank today. It, the scam was going further. The lady was going to take that scam a little bit further. She would have come to the bank. Somebody would have been at that bank to meet her in the front like she worked at the bank and got more money. So it's a, a lot of that happening. And when the if the senior doesn't have any children, any adult children in the home, they don't have any adult children, period. This lady's by herself. What what who's gonna take over? So this uh, this particular lady, we do have a she does have a power of attorney now. A neighbor did take power of attorney for her. So mm -hmm. um yeah, I mean it's I'm gonna first throw your contact information back up. Give me one second. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted to throw it out to the group also. Um, but I mean, I think I'd be interested in hearing if there's any financial conservatorship programs out there um, or if anyone knows of any, just wanted to see. That might be a good presentation for a future senior services working group meeting. Anyone know of anything like that? Brunson, anytime, anytime I've checked into um, conservatorships, just in general, mm -hmm. it, it's very hard to to find somebody who um, Social Security will do it, you know, for them as far as, you know, take control of their funds and then have somebody give it over. But they have to be approved by Social Security to be able to do it. It has to be a person that's approved by Social Security. And Social Security is the only one that's going to allow that conservatorship. Yeah. Um, that's as far as I've gotten in all of this research. And, you know, uh, again, you know, it's it's taking the power of the person away. Mm -hmm. So I think that all has to do with it um, as far as, you know, taking control of somebody to begin with. It's going to be hard to prove um, that that it needs to happen so one event isn't necessarily i think going to be the the reason why even though you know we've all i've come up with it i've had people scam for they sold their house and three hundred thousand dollars were taken um out of their account somehow or another um but as much as you want to get in there and say stop they still have free will and as long as they have free will and access to their funds and access to their life as they choose to live it it i i think like i said uh, you know is social security is controlling that purse spring um to begin with mm -hmm. so it's a federal type of situation that would have to be some legislation that would give us the power to do that and it's not even at the city or state level it's much higher the other thing is, even when this person, Social Security, is okaying, it's hard to know 
how honest the person is who's mm -hmm. trying to be that person to, to help this senior? How, I how, think how do you make that decision? If it's not a family member that the rest of the family agrees, this son or this daughter or this niece or this nephew or whoever it is, is very honest, very dependable. They have a job, they do this. That, how do you how do you choose that person? Right. Yeah, you're, you're right, Diane. It's very, very difficult. And like I said, I know Social Security themselves, the judge has to approve it, okay, at this point in time. So getting a judge to approve somebody, are they doing background checks on a person that's going to take conservatorship, even as a family member? I don't know how far that goes. So you know? here's an example. A lady that used to come here, she worked for, at the police, LA Police Department, one of them. I don't know which address. And um, her son, something happened with her son. And when, when this happened with this lady's son, she just kind of went a little mental problem. Not really, not bad. I mean, but just, it just kind of broke her. One of the ladies that was a, police, a policeman at the police department decided she would go to court and take over this lady's... Um, financial help help her keep her home take care of her money when this lady was coming here the that lady st stopped her from coming she had a health care she had a person that was was being paid to be with her all the time and she always wanted to be here at Good the morning center. the library will open in five minutes oh. okay and she enjoyed it and the lady who was her financial a, a person was not really good. She stopped her from coming to the senior center and uh, took her, she's at home and put her in a home. And nothing, the lady wasn't in a place where she needed to be in a home from what we saw here. Okay. So she was choosing that person. Yeah, I wonder Kathy, maybe we should um, talk to Beth Zadek and see if they um, have any, any experiences with this and they know of any nonprofits that might be doing something like this. Um, all right, great. Well, thank you, Diane. Any any other questions for Diane before we move on? Okay. Um, Diane, I missed your email address. This is David Norman with Beach City Health District. I'm sorry. Um, what is your email, ma'am? We have it in the chat, too. I'm sorry. It's dbrown at cityofhawthorne.org. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, David. Um, okay. Uh, how are the help for senior folks? Is Connie, Connie or Grace jumping on? Oh, no, I'm missing. I'm texted Connie. She hasn't answered me back. Okay. And Grace has also not answered me yet. I don't know what's going on with the two of them. Something <laughs> is amiss this morning for sure. Okay. Well, I just want to take I the opportunity to announce that, uh, they are having a, uh, gala this weekend on saturday and uh, we normally don't announce these fundraising galas but um a special someone is being awarded um for their work in the in the space and in the community and that is our very own jackie backrop our executive director um and so a bunch of us are going to be there and uh we're lo really looking forward to the event thank you yeah. Um, all right. So we'll we'll skip them for now. Um, I guess they just had too much fun this Memorial Day weekend. Hope you all had enjoyed yours as well. Uh, but I wanted to also share some important resources for um, seniors. Um, there is uh, a rent relief program is back on. This is again for landlords in in collaboration with tenants. Um, it closes June fourth. So uh, we have another uh, week of it. Um, get your applications in. Um, actually, exactly a week left. Um, LACountyRentRelief.com. If you know any seniors, anyone that uh, needs help with their rent, uh, this is um, this is open. This program is opened up again, and um, and you can receive up to thirty thousand dollars per unit. So that's quite a lot of money. Uh, so so yeah, wanted to share that. We'll also put this in our meeting minutes, but it's LACountyRentRelief.com is the website. And uh, let me just copy and paste it and put it in the chat as well. No, 
Oh, thanks, David. David put in a bunch of steps on conservative. Yeah, that, yeah, that was just basically a self-help guide to the county, to the courts. Mm -hmm. um, there are some agencies that offer, like they have a list. I don't know if the courts are still doing it, but they have a list of pre-vetted um, individuals who um, basically um, they are approved to be conservators. Um, I'll see if I can find that information. I use it a lot with that. I retired from the regional center system. So we used to pursue the seven limited powers of conservatorship um, often. But in the context of this discussion, it's important to note that you do not have to get all seven powers, that most of the business to protect seniors can be transacted with only be granting um, the, the powers. I made a mistake too. I said one and four, but um, it's actually two and four. For example, the access to conservators' confidential records and papers and four, exercise the conservator's right to enter into a contract. Usually with those two limited powers, you can serve as um, basically power of attorney or act on behalf of a senior. So it's very important to know when you're explaining to somebody that, you know, if they have, you know, full cognitive function, if they're able to make their own decisions concerning their residence, their medical decisions that, you know, look, this is really just to protect you um, it, I, I'm, I'm gonna be by your side that as a conservator, that's what they're supposed to do. I'm gonna be by your side to basically handle any contract matters or any financial matters to make sure that you're not, um, experiencing fiduciary abuse. So I just wanted to point that out. I also see if I can find some more resources and I'll post them in the chat. Oh, that's great, David. Thank you so much for that. It's good to know you don't have to do there. You can be very specific in the type of conservatorship you're looking for. Yes, because a lot of people, they they feel like the main complaint you're going to get from people is that you're trying to control my life. Mm -hmm. And I can do this on my own. I don't need, you know, well, you know, if they have an example, I've actually have been successful when helping a client at a regional center when they had an example of fiduciary abuse. They were able to, um, I went after the two powers, two and four. And um, basically that we were able to assign a, a conservatorship with to them that only dealt with those issues, their financial issues and contracts. So that conservative would always need to be present when they're signing something as an example, or when they're filling out some type of contract, or if they're withdrawing any amount over $200 from the bank. These are terms that the court and the conservatee uh, conservati agreed upon. And it was a success. And it basically, she was able to avert fraud it was about six months later and she was hit with some type of scam and we are, we were able to identify that as a fraud. So, you know, in, in situations where that, you know, um, there is a trustworthy person, as somebody mentioned earlier, that is the key. Unfortunately, we do have, you know, they're really financial predators that prey on seniors to try to take advantage of them. But usually with those two powers, you can get a lot done. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting. David, um, Excuse me. What court do they go through, David? Well, it's the California court system. And typically, well, we used to be in mental health court, but that was the mental health department 95. That doesn't apply. That was for individuals with limited cognition. I'm not sure exactly what court a general conservatorship cut goes through, but I'm sure, you know, each division has a department that deals with conservatorships. You would just need to search a uh, conservatorship court near me or, or and it would more than likely come up. Very cool. I think we, I, yeah, this, this sounds like it's worth a, a presentation on at a future senior services working group meeting. Um, because yeah, it sounds like a lot of us are seeing this on the ground and, uh, and we did have a bunch of senior fraud presentations about a year ago from uh, state Senator Ben Allen, as well as a number of other uh, elected officials who made this uh, a priority to kind of get information out on uh, senior fraud stuff that they're seeing as well in their offices. So great. And just to be clear on the court question, that's going to go through probate court. So that's going to be any, any court that has a probate division. Oh, that makes sense. I also wonder like if like IHSS workers can become conservators too. Uh, no, they, they can't because they have a financial interest with the person. Uh, okay. And, and that, that somebody who would get that in that scenario, they can take full advantage of the person and nobody would ever know. Right. So it has to be somebody who has no financial interest or no gain 
from before the individual. Right. So it almost has to be have to be like a nonprofit almost. Or it could be that or or it could be family a family member. Yeah, a family member, a, tr a trustworthy family member, although that that that's questionable too sometimes, unfortunately. Yeah. But um so you if you're a family member that's also the IHSS caregiver, that could be kind of tricky. Possibly. I mean, that would be up to the court to decide, but it would be highly unlikely. Yeah. Interesting. I just well, put the link to the probate division in the court in the chat right now, too. Great. So people will have that. Thank you, David. Thank you for jumping in on that. That's very interesting. Um. One other thing I wanted to share with everyone is um, on the homelessness side, we are uh, facing um, with um, a family system that's very impacted right now. Uh, there is long wait times to see uh, caseworkers. And so at the homeless task force meeting and recently we've convened like a working group on families. Just want to let everyone know what's going on. Um, you know, um, you know, we do encounter a family that is, Homeless, uh, it's 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 the the recommendation that we've been hearing from losses like don't call LA Hop, um, you know two on one can take hours. Uh, there there are some motel vouchers through two on one, but you do have to brave long wait times uh, on two on one. And so what we're recommending is that you know you know for our caseworkers and if your um, friends or families is like you can just intervene, step in. Do some problem solving. Um, we're we're trying to get the system to allow adult individual caseworkers, um, caseworkers that that triage the adult system to help on the family side of things. And it seems some of that advocacy has paid off. As um, on um, on Thursday, there's going to be a big training session that LASA is doing to make sure people on the adult side are trained up for the family CES side, the coordinated entry system on the family side. Because uh, right now, what what, ten, what what can happen is if you meet a case manager and they're not in the family system, then that could be a wrong door. And so we're trying to break that down. As you can see, LA Times also picked up on the story a couple of weeks ago about the increase in families uh, facing homelessness, and uh, we're we're trying to um, we're trying to increase access to the system, and as well, uh, we're also trying to find um, places to put up. Uh, temporary shelters. Uh, one of the things that the LASA is looking into is to see if they can stand up the winter shelter program and turn it into a family shelter for the time being. So that's something that they're looking into. And then also another thing to let everyone know is that um, you can also, if families who need assistance, they can call uh, uh, their Medi-Cal provider, their insurance provider on the back of their insurance card and access community support case management services, which can maybe provide them with housing navigation services as well. But it has to be the community support division of the insurance provider. So providers like Blue Shield, HealthNet, LA Care, they all have the capability of uh, providing case management services uh, for families. So yeah, I wanted to share that. Um, any questions on that? Okay. Great. Oh, David also said that Bet Zedek has a self-help conservatorship clinic. That's very interesting. Um, we yeah, I think Kathy, we should definitely like contact them and 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 kind of see if we can learn more about this clinic and see if it's worth presenting to the working group. Yeah. Okay. So no word yet from our help for seniors folks. Um, then let's move on. I don't think there's any legislative offices on today. Um, and so we will move on to COG updates. Jackie? Well, the COG is um, getting ready for uh, new officers. We're gonna be electing new officers and our budget is balanced this year. So we're doing very well. Um, we don't have anything, I, don't, I can't think of anything special that I should be mentioning. Uh, Bronson, do you have any ideas? Um, 
No, I mean, we had- like... we're, oh, we're working very, very actively on the local travel network. Mm -hmm. And uh, two things, the local travel network. And um, one of the things we're doing is we're talking today to the League of Women Voters in the beach cities and trying to talk about how the seniors can use these um, alternative vehicles. We're trying to work on a um, fall event where we actually would have times for people to ride things like tricycles that might be helpful for seniors. And uh, we just recently met with the city of Lawndale. So we're doing, we're, we're advancing that program and hope to give you more information about it. The other thing is we're finishing up a digital equity report. And uh, the idea would be that we're trying to get funding to expand the South Bay Fiber Network to go into areas that need more digital services. What we're finding out is it's not just access, it's cost and reliability that's really gonna be important. And uh, that those reports are gonna come out at the end of next month. So in the summertime, we'll be taking them to the board and discussing digital equity. Um, anything else, Jake, did I get those right? <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds about right. Okay. So Jake, you wanna introduce yourself to the group? Yeah, I'd love to. Oh, um, I'm Jake. Oh, it says I'm Keenan, but uh, <laughs> I am uh, Jake Romoff. I'm a project coordinator at the COG. Been here about four months now, and I'm working on transportation and land use, primarily on the initiatives that Jackie just mentioned, the uh, LTN and our digital equity program. And one of the things I've been specifically doing is visiting different senior centers and assessing their digital equity needs as well as any literacy programs so we will uh, very shortly wally and i are writing it up but we'll have uh, some very in-depth information for for the for all of you on um, the programs offered in the south bay for digital literacy technical assistance and even just like device loaning if in need so i Jackie. think it would be important if any of you do have something that you want to make sure jake knows about that would really be important to let him know and um, because, and if you want to even discuss any digital equity issues right now, we could we could do that. But it's going to be a big issue for us over the summer. Hey, Jackie. Um, since many of our seniors take public transportation, any updates on the? I mean, yeah, there's two big things going on Metro right. One's the public safety stuff with Stephanie Wiggins, and and the police contracts, and then also the the Metro the row update. Well, okay, so as you read in the papers, they're they're still trying to grapple with public safety. And uh, Metro is probably going to put in more police officers on the buses and the trains. Bus ridership is actually going up, which is very interesting. Train ridership is not going up that fast. Um, and uh, but that but that is the overwhelming issue is safety. And um, obviously, we only hear the the really bad things. Uh, but Many, many people are riding every day and uh, more and more every day. As far as the sea line, um, it's it's an interesting vote that they took. Um, it turns out that the, the Metro Board took a vote to continue st uh, the environmental impact report on the right-of-way line, which is the line that Torrance, City of Torrance has been supporting and not the one that Redondo and Lawndale have been supporting. They would like it to go on Hawthorne Boulevard. It turns out that Metro does not have money for any line. They have none of them are fully funded, so uh, they haven't figured. It, 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 there is no date actually to start building any of them because they have to find about four hundred million dollars. I think they're short, even on the least expensive one. So um, we're going to continue with the with the report. You know all the documentation, but there is no date for when this line would get. Uh, started. So I can try to answer any questions on that. And the the other thing that the COG is, is being um, asked to do is to put funding into the, uh, more funding into the Inglewood people, uh, people mover. There's two people movers. People get confused about this. There's the people mover going into LA airport. And then there's another private people mover that Inglewood wants to build from the, uh, the public rail line to the stadiums. Um, and that is underfunded as well, and they've come to us to ask us to fund it, and um, it's going to be very controversial at the COG. Yeah, thanks, Jackie. Yeah, it's good to hear that um, ridership is actually increasing, and and maybe these are just exceptions, not the norm. It was also interesting. I was reading the paper this morning 
that they were saying on some of these police contracts that um, uh, because Metro does have jurisdiction over where the patrols are happening, like I guess some sheriffs are just sitting outside in their patrol cars and maybe not even patrolling the 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 the, the trains. That was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that's the that's one reason they're talking about getting their own service, their own police force, which mm -hmm. they used to have a long time ago. But now they're contracting, and so they don't have as much jurisdiction over what those officers are doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really the best model for them to get their own police force. I think that's like two years down the road, though. Oh, yeah. It's gonna take it's gonna take some time, but that's really the only effective way to mitigate all of the the issues and the the, the crime that is happening on the metro, uh, because then they can you know charge their own security force as well. I think they contract right now with allied security for the security officers or community safety officers, CSOs. But you know, they don't they don't carry weapons and they're really limited in their scope as far as what they can intervene in. They end up calling law enforcement anyway. So things will be a lot better when they do get their own law enforcement. Yeah. You know, I I, I was watching that news story this morning too about the metro stuff. And it just came to mind that you have the the um, Olympics coming to L.A. in a couple of years. And what is that, three years from now or two and a half years from now? People are going to need this transportation. And this, this is going to scare people away from this Olympics event if you if they can't get this under control. You know, and it was just, just this random thought that I ran across, you know, that ran in my head this morning. And I went... Man, I said, can they staff this up fast enough? Like David, you're saying, hire the staff and hire and train, you know, um, the police officers or, or get this, you know, so that these trains are safe. The trains and buses are all safe. You know, I hate to admit it, but I have a sneaky suspicion that they'll get it together by the time the Olympics come. Um, they always, whoever they are, tend to do that. They They do it. They did it when the... When the president came, they cleaned up all the homeless off of San Francisco. <laughs> so, you know, I feel like they cleaned up all the streets in downtown L.A. when the president came. So I, I have no doubt that they'll get it together before then. Unfortunately, it probably would take that pressure for them to do it, which is unfortunate. But that's the reality of that that we live in as far as uh, some some city governments. I, I just think that pressure's on now, okay? I, I'm not talking about, you know, two weeks before the Olympics team starts showing up. I'm talking about, like, now. It's the pressure's on here. No, I agree and, with you, but it's probably that gonna, money. I agree with you. It's probably going to be one year before the Olympics, though, so just be kept, Just be prepared for that. Well, they, they like I said, the ridership is going up, so there's a lot of good news stories that aren't getting reported, and it's just these... Other stories are really very, very serious and very bad. So, uh, and on the Olympics, they will have dedicated uh, buses. So that will be a little bit different than the, um, and there also might actually be security on those Olympic buses because they don't want anybody coming into the stadium with anything. So you might have to get, you know, be, be screened before you even get on the bus. Okay. Uh, good conversation on that. Um, Diane mentioned in, in a message to me that uh, Assemblywoman Tina McKenna was the one that brought the funds for the senior center to Hawthorne. So kudos to uh, to the Assemblywoman for doing that. Um, all right. Any any uh, updates from the group? Anything going on? Um, how is Mental Health Month going? Um, David? Mental Health Month is going great. We have our free fitness that happens every Monday, except for last Monday due to the holiday that's taking place at the various uh, the, the beach locations that's been published. Um, and we have the a senior fair taking place on the 30th at, uh, at 5-0 in Hermosa Beach. We'll be at their senior center tabling for their um, senior um, event. So um, we've had a lot of a lot of uh, different programming alcoves just uh, you know celebrated one of their anniversaries. We had a lot of the teens who um, uh, received our mental health services. I just want to plug everybody too about alcove, you know, for 
our care management program, you have to live in the three big cities, but for our all code program, which serves ages 12 to 25, who may be experienced, you know, various uh, mental health and uh, physical issues, we serve everyone in spot eight. So if you're in spot eight and you know of any youth that is experiencing any type of crisis or, or they just need some support, I mean, or they just need a place to hang out after school, they have a drop-in center. Um, a lot of kids do homework with computers and things of that nature. It's really a good place to develop those peer positive relationships with teens and um, and young adults. So it goes all the way up to 25. They're receiving more help, like with job, securing jobs and things of that nature. But it's really a good option for youth in a, in, a, in, a, in our area and surrounding in SPA 8. So we, yeah. we, stay, we stay busy in mental health month over at the district. Believe that. That's good. Uh, much needed services. Yeah, the Alcove is, is amazing. Um, I'm so jealous. I kind of wish I can just hang out there and do some work. Um, I know my son, he's 10. He's like, can't wait till he's 12 to go hang out there with his buddies. Yeah, it's yeah. cool, man. It's a cool spot. They get free snacks, free drink. I mean, their, their, their break room looks better than the employees. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, they're doing really good over there. Okay. Um, hey, Kathy. So we do we try we try calling uh, Grace and no luck. No. Okay. All right. Well, we'll have to. I, know, I don't know what happened to them. I know I heard from Connie. Didn't hear it all from Grace. So I'm not sure what's happening. Maybe their okay. computer system's down over there today. I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, we'll have to uh, bring them back on our next meeting. Um, looking forward to uh, uh, seeing Grace again and having her back uh, on in the senior services community. Um, all right. Well, well, we'll have to cut, up, cut our meeting short today. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. And our next meeting will be uh, July 23rd. So mark your calendars and we'll reconvene then. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. Thanks, Diane. David, we're going to talk. You're on mute. Unmute you. What was that? I unmute you so I could hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. You you have you've done this conservatorship thing before? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to I'll give you a call and maybe I can pick your brain. I'm going to read through a little bit on Betsadic. Um yeah. I have in the past um, but I know, I think at that point they charge, do they charge them? I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I, they they I, would, did. I, would, I would go through the steps on the Betsetic site. I mean, if you, if they do charge, it's probably going to be the lowest amount that you can find out there, but I would go through the self-help clinic through Betsetic and see, I mean, they typically, I've seen them as high as three to five grand. I mean, I was going to say that's, that could be prohibitive for some, you know, for some of our families trying to do this. 